through 1 to 16. To none was the people through MP3 or YouTube on the earth. We'd like to suggest two, three questions. Number one and verse two. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Why did they complain against Moses? And what can we learn from here? In verse 6, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. What does it mean? And what does it mean in the New Testament? And how can we apply it to our life? Last question in verse 12. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone, put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. What can we learn in Aaron and hers supporting Moses? And explain the difference between courage and flattery in the scripture. In the last time, Exodus chapter 16, verse 35, 36, and the children of Israel are manna 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They are manna until they come to the border of the land of Kenya. Now an omer is one tenth of an ephah. God provided the daily bread of one omer, half a gallon or two liters of manna. This chapter, God provided water from a rock at Rephidim in the wilderness of a sin, desert of a sin, or desert of a sin. Later, God brought them to Mount Sinai or Horeb, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from wilderness of sin. Wilderness of sin is different from wilderness of sin. Uh, here, see a reliable map uh, referring near to the wilderness of sin. According to the commandment of the Lord, and uh, captured in Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. No water for the people to drink. This problem doesn't produce patience. Nothing lack in faith, but causes bitterness, aggravating the works of a flesh. Next verse to contend in verse two, complaint in verse three. Jump chapter one to two four. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing or peace. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15, looking carefully, Lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any roots of bitterness spring up, cause trouble. The bitterness cause it right here, uh, content, content, content. Uh, by this uh, may become defiled. Many become defiled. Not only one person, some people have the bitterness that is uh, impacted influence with the other people. If you 
this is chapter 431. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Put away by the story. Question 1, verse 2. Therefore, the people contended with Moses. Bitterness causes the contempt. So to contend, they disputed with Moses. Contend means disputed. To contend is the work of flesh, not of the suffering. Galatians chapter 5, 19, 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, kindness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like all, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Practice, uh, though, uh, another way, I uh, cannot be saved. This is attractive, habitual work. So give us water that we may drink. The no water for the people to drink in verse one causes them to ask water. Nothing is wrong, but the problem is the following. He contended with me. That's a problem. We should do all things without disputing or contending and complaining. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Without complaining and contending. That you may become blameless and uh, harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crook and perverse generation among whom you shine, they the lights in the walls. So we shouldn't uh, work in the works of flesh, such as contempt, contending, uh, or complaining. Tempt the law. That's another problem. To tempt the law is about whether or not the law is among us by disobedience. They assume if the Lord is among us, the Lord might do something, otherwise the Lord may not do anything. See verse 7, is the Lord among us or not? That's a tempt the law. So basically, what the Lord would do you know, by uh, my disobedience. As long as we are in Christ, walking after Spirit, we would neither tempt God, nor be tempted by Satan. Matthew chapter 47, Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9, <coughs> through 13, Now let us tempt the Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain, as some of them also complained, were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the end of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands Take the heat lest he fall. So basically, we should uh, uh, work after spirit uh, in Christ. No temptation has overtaken you except the such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted be beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make it the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. As long as you stick you know, on the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, you will not be tempted because God is David.
you a way, another way, a vision to avoid the temptation. You know, they can tend to why. Tend to why is whatever circumstance we should respond to circumstances the Torah depend upon the law. And many God's word the Holy Spirit. Verse 3, and the people, uh, uh, three, thirstens there for water. And the people complained against the Moses. Without prayer to the Lord, they complained after the, the contending. That is sad due to works of flesh, not of the Spirit. And said, why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? And so, no sooner does God provide the bread of manna daily. Now they are thinking that God is going to let them die of thirst. Isn't it interesting how quickly we forget what God has done? How quickly we can despair and imagine the worst? How fickle we are? Nothing good in us unless we in Christ work after Spirit. For example, why even a Christian life or a church disappears? We began prayer and set up purpose. We make a detailed plan and pursue it by flesh, this problem. Reaching the purpose. So purpose is set up God into the prayer, the Holy Spirit, you know, but it's a whole the other next step is organ by flesh without you know, asking the Lord. Without considering the word of God, you know, God's wisdom, not seeking. The works of flesh cause troubles. The flesh is impossible to work the spiritual things. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good to work. Who said? He said Paul. For two will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. In other words, how to perform what is good, how to detail plan, I could not find by flesh, bread and by the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, no depraved, no total depraved, in Christ, if you're in Christ, in the, uh, in Christ. Jesus, who do not work according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now being made a perfect by the flesh? That's stupid. But the sadly, you know, many in this soul. First, a human had body, soul, spirit. That bodily thirst for water, soul is thirst for knowledge, emotion, or will. And spiritual thirst for a God. So somebody spiritual thirst for God, you know, seeking for, you know, ultimate value. Uh, maturity, that's why it's a holding, you know, uh, holder, you know, people case, that's maturity. Some is a fame, glory, something like that. Or, the different God, money, but there is a true God, the Father of Jesus Christ, only one true God. They were bodily, physically thirsty for water, so that's why water, you know, physical thirst water here. First of all, so Moses cried out to the Lord, that's a good practice by avoiding contending or quarrel. He as a minister of God asked the Lord by prayer. Second Timothy chapter twenty four. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, not involved in contending, disputing. Be gentle to all, able to teach, patience. Colossians chapter twenty three. And whatever you do.
do it to it heartily as to the Lord, not to man. What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Lord interpretation or supplication to the Lord. Go on before the people and take with you some of the others of Israel and take in your hands your rod with which you struck the river and go with other ministers. Moses should take the rod with your hands and go. Then verse 6, other ministers right here in the elders of Israel. Then verse 6, Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. God made Moses stand on the rock in Mount Horeb or Sinai. And you shall strike uh, the rock or smite the rock. The rod is the type of Jesus in typology, typology, this called typology. Jesus was stricken or uh, smitten once on the cross for all our sins. Once is perfect and complete atonement for us. Not anything else required. First Corinthians chapter 10 verses 2 uh, through 4. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud in the sea. So typically, uh, just like explaining, all ate the same spiritual food, that is manna, manna type of spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. When you were, for they drank of their spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was a Christ, the symbol of Christ. Romans chapter 6, 10, For the death that he died, he died to sin once, only one time, not twice, once for all, but the life that he lived, he lived to God. So in that way, about 40 years later, at a similar situation in Kadesh, in the wilderness of a sin, here wilderness sin, not wilderness sin. Uh, wilderness uh, sin is the southern part of wilderness of sin. Moses' improper representation of the Lord before his people by striking twice on the rock for water with anger over you rebels. Numbers chapter 20, verses 1, 2, and 10, 12. Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of a sin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam died, the Moses' sister, there, and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation. So they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. Verse 10, And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembled together before the rock, and he said to them, Here now you rebels, must we bring water for you out of the rock. Then Moses lifted his hand to strike the rock twice with his rock, and water came out abundantly, and congregation and their animal drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in me, to hallow me in the eyes of people, uh, children of Israel, in other words, make me holy, because you uh, did not you know, represent me uh, properly, people, uh, people, my people. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land, which I have given them. Matthew chapter 5, 22, Jesus said, But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without cause, in other words, the rightful wrath, rightful wrath, not rightful, not reasonable wrath, without cause, shall be in danger of the judgment or punishment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall
himself in danger of the towns of Raqqa and other great towns. But whosoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. So that's why is uh, Moses, as a Hebrew minister, the gospel minister, should not be angry to the people, not to be even to contenders, not to even contenders, but should they have represented the Lord as to the Lord, not to man. Very important to represent as to the Lord, not to man. That the people may drink, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Moses did so here properly before the others. Verse 7. So he called the name of the place Manasseh and Meribah because of the contention of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord. Masa means tempted, while Meribah means contention, dispute, or strife. Is the Lord among us or not? By disobedience, they wanted to see whether or not God is doing something. Verse uh, 8. Now Amala came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Amala as unbelievers is a type of flesh, while Israel a type of the spirit. Israel means uh, the people built by God in the spirit. Amalek was the grandson of Esau. Amalek's descendants called an, as Amalekites were a nomadic tribe in the wilderness near to the Dead Sea, waiting on other tribes and taking spoils, simply mobs, you know, like global mobs. They were hostile against the Israelites. For example, no compromise with them, but utterly destroyed them. Agab and Haman were Amalekites. Genesis chapter 32, verse 12. Now, Tima was the concubine Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she brought Amalek to Eliphaz. Then meaning Amalek is Esau's grandson. Did you work? the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. First Simon chapter 15, verse 2 through 3 and 9. The says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came out from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. And do not spear them or kill both the man and woman, infant, nursing child, ox, and sheep, camel, donkey. Verse 9. But Saul and the people spear the Agak, Amalekai, and the best of the sheep, the oxen, and uh, fatalons of the lambs, and all dead with the good and were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and waterless that they utterly destroyed. Esther chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. Then Haman, right here, Haman descended uh, over Amalek. Haman said to King Ashashuris, there is a certain people, that is indicated Jewish people, scattered the dispersed among the people in all the province of your kingdom. Their words are different from all other peoples, and they do not keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them remain. If it pleases the king, 
Do I seek to, to please man? For if uh, I still please the man, I will not be a bond servant of Christ. So pursuing the God in which meaning we should do it. In order to explain the reason, we must find out from the Bible, God's word, not from men's lips. First question. So Joshua defended Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Joshua defeated Amalekites. Defeated, he had the valued experience for the greatest battles in the promised land. So in the future, right, greatest of battles in the promised land. Verse 40, then the Lord said to Moses, after the experience, write this for memorial in the book and account it in the hearing of Joshua. So God had molded Joshua to be his instrument to bring Israelites through the great battles into the promised land. We come to what? We come to what here? Then I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. We come to is to utterly blot out Amalek, the type of flesh. God has only one sentence for your flesh. That's crucify it. Mortify your flesh by the Spirit. Verse 15. And Moses built an altar and called his name, The Lord is my banner. That's Jehovah Nisi. Why? In verse 16. Because he said, because the Lord had a sworn, the Lord will have a war with Amalek from generation to generation. Lord has had a unilateral, irrevocable promise, or a solemn promise, or oath. We'll have a war with Amalek from generation to generation, as God had a war with Amalek to Joshua. God was going to have a word with Amalek. To bad examples of Agak and Hama. To Sarah and Esther. God will never make a peace with your flesh. No compromise with the flesh. God wants our flesh to be crucified. Or to be reckoned dead. He doesn't want us living after the flesh. But after the spirit. Because the flesh indeed cannot work the supportive thing. Galatians chapter 2 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, not with the flesh, no longer, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Because the faith which of Christ, Christ is the author, the beginner of a faith. That's why Christ always there. Then Christ's word is a God's word. Who loved me, he gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 6, 7. Do not be deceived in God. It is not market. For whatever a man sows, that he will reap. Some people try to claim, you know, God's more than him. No, God is not, you know, market. So, whatever you are, you are flesh word, you are uh, a rape and a flesh thing. So, we covered all three questions. Uh, let's sing all together a bulletin, our last song.